Rajiv Katal, Managing Director at Lodat Pharma. And the name of this session is Immunity, Ingredients in the Age of Post-COVID, and specifically in the Age of Post-COVID Syndrome. Um, before we start, just a brief disclaimer. The statements in this presentation have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration, and these products are not meant to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. So we're very excited about this particular topic um, because post-COVID and immunity have been such a relevant area of interest over the past couple of years. Um, and the purpose of this presentation is really to ask the key question, um, what does research say about supplements and their role in supporting post-COVID syndrome. Um, obviously, this is a very new topic, um, just a couple of years old, and specifically in terms of post-COVID, it's even a newer topic as we learn more about it. So what we're going to do in this particular presentation is give a brief background on not only post-COVID syndrome, but also uh, potential ingredients that are supplements and all of the new research that is currently being developed or um, has been published. And what we've done is we've actually um, are going to show four different clinical trials. Um, we've garnered these clinical trials based on their breadth and their scope, as well as their um, uh, variants. Uh, we have one clinical trial which has been published um, based on vitamin, a vitamin formulation. It's a human clinical. Um, another clinical trial which we're going to uh, discuss, which has also been published. It's a, it's a review, an ingredient review on a single ingredient. Uh, we're very excited about this particular uh, study. And then we're going to talk about an in vitro study, a non-human clinical trial. Um, and then finally, we're going to talk on a double-blinded placebo cl uh, clinical trial on a single branded ingredient, uh, which is a, um, an ingredient which we've actually developed and the review and the study is actually ongoing. So we feel that this is a broad enough level of research and um, we'll give the uh, audience a little bit to, to think about and um, you know fathom over. So, so a little bit about you know, our credentials, if you will, who are we? Um, LODAT Pharma or LODAT uh, is an acronym. It stands for Live One Day at a Time. We are a US-based, science-based manufacturer of generic pharma, OTC nutraceuticals, and botanical ingredients. Um, our mission, to manufacture, innovate with the highest research standards. We have conducted clinical trials in uh, major peer-reviewed journals. Um, we have 40 plus odd years of experience. Our team is very qualified. We are ISO 9001 and 2015 certified, which is a very high audit uh, certification. We are US based. Um, we've actually been voted and nominated as best exporter from the state of Illinois for two years. And we have a full regulatory and dossier expertise team for our ingredients and our manufactured products and we have all major certifications. So a little bit of background. Um, first, we wanna define post-COVID and post-COVID syndrome. So the official definition of post-COVID is post-acute COVID-19, which is a syndrome um, also referred to PACS or PCS. You'll see the term PCS throughout this presentation. And it's characterized by the persistence of clinical symptoms beyond four weeks from the onset of acute symptoms. The Center for Disease Control, the CDC in the US, has formulated that post-COVID conditions um, describe health issues that persist for more than four weeks after being infected with COVID-19. Um, and the symptoms are reported by patients going to a physician and reported individually. So PCS or post-COVID syndrome can last, as mentioned, according to the definition, um, months after being infected. P 
PCS can even occur if no COVID symptoms initially occurred uh, with the subject or the patient. And the mechanisms underlying PCS is still unknown. And this is some research that's currently being developed. The symptoms may include brain fog or difficulty concentrating, fatigue, loss of taste and smell, dizziness, and cough. Elderly are most likely to uh, receive it, um, but quite honestly, it's reported in all age levels. And approximately 10 to 40% of COVID results in PCS. PCS or post-COVID syndrome, you probably have also heard other terms for it. Another commonly used term is long COVID. What's also important to note, and, and we wanted to discuss this, are key immunity terms. Um, for those of you who are not as science oriented, um, just want to give a, a, a brief overview of this. And this is very important because these key markers, if you will, or immune markers or immune cells, um, th this is what's being tested in the clinical reviews and the clinical trials that we're going to be later on discussing. Um, a T helper 17 cell, these are cells that facilitate our immune response against pathogens, and they can also activate other immune cells during infection. So these are very important. There's a, a little visual um, of a Th17. Um, what is a cytokine? Cytokines are broad and loose category of small proteins. They're also important in the immunomodulatory cell signaling. And what is a lymphocyte? A lymphocyte is a type of white blood cell in the immune system, and lymphocytes include natural killer cells, T cells, and B cells. So there are all these different immune cells that may be activated during an infection. And if we can monitor these particular cells uh, in the clinical trials, or if researchers can monitor them, they can see if the immunity is actually increasing or decreasing, etc. And these um, different cells um, do different jobs during an infection. Some of them may work to activate other cells. Some of them may do the immune work themselves. Um, the immune system is extremely complex. And we like to look at each of these factors independently as well as in a whole. And you'll see the researchers in the clinical trials that we're discussing have done exactly that. So we're going to move on to the first clinical trial. This was actually a, what we call the uh, trial one, if you will. And this is a very interesting trial, which is published. Um, um, it was using a multivitamin supplementation. Um, the name of the trial is the proposal of a food supplement for the management of post-COVID syndrome. It was published in the European Review for Medical and Pharmacological Sciences. Uh, very recently, approximately a year ago, January 2021. And the subjects in this trial, um, there were 40 subjects total. They were put into a the supplement group, which took the multivitamin, and then in a placebo group. Um, and the placebo group did not have COVID. There were 20 subjects who recovered from COVID and who took the supplement. Um, so these 20 subjects recovered from COVID. They had PCS. They went to their physician and then they took the multivitamin supplement. The other 20 subjects did not have COVID at all. They were in the placebo group. They took a placebo um, placebo pill. Mean age was 52.25 year, years of age. It was a 15 day study and, um, and the subjects took one pill per day. The way of monitoring or assessing um, was done via the activation deactivation adjective checklist or ADACL. This is a multidimensional test evaluating energy, tiredness, tension, and calmness. Um, and this is also a international standardized test. So it has been used in researchers for many, many years. And so this is not something that the researchers invented themselves, if you will. So you might ask, you know, why did the researchers conduct the study in this way? Because, this, because an effective study needs a control group, obviously. And in this case, it wouldn't be ethical if the control group had COVID, um, but did not have any care at all. So in this case, the researchers used a group of healthy individuals at baseline, who never had COVID, and they want to see if the multivitamin group can achieve the same health baseline 
as the healthy control group. So what was in the supplement that um, that the researchers used? Well, it was a it was a, a blend, a multivitamin blend. Um, it had vitamin C, 160 milligrams, acetyl L-carnitine, um, olive oil phenols, uh, thiamine, vitamin B6, uh, folic acid, vitamin D3, and vitamin B12. Um, the study researchers made the assumption that vitamin C obviously, you know, had a lot of immunomodulatory effects. The acetyl L-carnitine was an amino acid derived compound involved in metabolism. Um, and the um, olive oil phenols, uh, which are, you know, these are the three main products, had antioxidant phenols from fruits and leaves, et cetera. So they, they, they took together a, a particular formulation and they put it together and they tested it out. And the results were, were really very promising. Um, I don't know if you can see on this particular chart, but on the left-hand chart are the actual data points. On the right hand is a graphical representation. And they noticed a real improvement in energy, um, psychological status of the users of the supplement. Obviously, it's a small, small um, a test, um, but the results were quite promising. And participants in the supplement group showed greater improvement across the ADACL. They showed an improvement in energy and calmness. Uh, decrease in tiredness and tension. And by the study's end, the vitamin group was almost on par with the healthy placebo group. Um, the energy actually increased with the vitamin group by 123%, which is what's being shown here on the left-hand side. Uh, the tiredness decreased by 51%. Tension decreased by 48%. Calmness increased by forty percent, um, and so these are these are actually quite promising results. In the clinical trial two, um, this is a review study, and we get asked all the time at Lodat, you know, um, is a review study important as a clinical trial study, um, and we believe it is. And the reason we believe a review study is, is because what a review study does is it looks across a large spectrum of published work according to a specific uh, parameter. And it looks at this and tries to identify between, you know, all of this, this large parameters, um, the end result of, you know, a huge number of studies. And so that in some ways is actually more important than one particular smaller study because you're looking at a broader range. Um, this trial, this clinical trial two that we, we call clinical trial true is, is a review. And the review is important because um, it's going across over 1000 different studies. The study design actually looked at key research terms. So what happened was um, the title of the study, first of all, uh, was the effects of curcumin as a dietary supplement for patients with COVID-19, a systematic review of randomized clinical trials. Um, as you can tell in the, in the title, this is a single ingredient study uh, looking at curcumin and looking at how it affects post-COVID-19 patients. Uh, it was published in the journal drug discovery and therapeutics. And the study began with over a thousand papers, um, 1,098 papers, and it filtered down to six particular papers. The key searches that the study actually did um, when it looked at the 1,098 papers were COVID and curcumin and variations of those different terms. And what happened was the study actually looked at, when it looked at the 1,098 uh, papers, it looked at papers from PubMed, um, over 152 papers, um, from WOS, 183 papers, uh, Scopus, Embase, Google, Scholar. It looked at all of these different areas. It filtered it out, and then it actually tried to see um, the effects um, 
you know, after it was filtered out, you know, what the common denominator was. And at the end, there were six papers out of all of these 1,098 that evaluated the participant on the measures listed above. Um, the other measures that it actually looked at as well were on cytokine levels and gene expression of transcription factors and cytokines on patients with COVID-19. The study, by the way, was conducted in 2022. So what were the results after the review was done? Well, um, you know, the bottom line is that the, the cur that curcumin may actually have a positive effect on relieving COVID-19 re uh, related inflammatory response. The lymphocyte count was higher in the curcumin group. Um, and again, this is of the six uh, uh, published papers that were out there. Um, and that curcumin decreased the number of T helper 17 cells. Um, it actually reduced the level of T helper 17 cell related cytokines, but increased the gene expression um, of TREG transcriptions factors. And so this actually was, is very positive in, in many different instances. The next study we're going to be discussing is on, um, we call it for the clinical trial three and four. Um, this is actually, these studies are actually uh, conducted by LODAT. Uh, we want to get some of this information out there. Uh, one of the studies is an in vitro trial and the other is a human clinical trial, a human um, uh, double-blinded placebo control trial. And it's using an ingredient that, that LODAT has developed called Immunodat. It's a, Immunodat is a proprietary ingredient that consists of an elderberry extract. And the trial postulates that Immunodat may be effective in the management of PCS as well as cough and cold. So in the clinical trial three, um, which was an in vitro trial, and in vitro meaning it's a non-human trial, this was done on mice, mouse macrophages and immunodat. Um, and this evaluates the immunomodulatory activity of immunodat by the phagocytic assay using mouse macrophages. So in layman's term, what this means is that a foreign body, a foreign cell, and again, this is all done in, in Petri dishes, so it's not a human trial, um, but a foreign body, a foreign cell is introduced to the immune cell of the mouse macrophage, and the immune cell engulfs or eats the foreign cell. Um, this is known as phagocytosis. The immune cell was injected with immunodat, and when the phagocytosis happens, um, the immune system then attacks the invaders. When immunodat is injected in the immune cell, the immune cell engulfs more of the foreign cell. And that's what the result found. It actually found that the immune cell with the immunodat actually did engulf more of the foreign cell than without having the immunodat. So macrophages were treated with immunodat and the level of phagocytosis was assessed as compared to the control, which was not treated with immunodat. And again, as mentioned, the results was that macrophages increased phagocytic activity after immunodat was injected. This is an actual picture of that happening, of the zymosin or the foreign body being engulfed by the macrophages. And the in vitro results, again, very promising. Um, you can see the, the fourth line that immunodat, um, which was treated with the macrophages, demonstrated a similar phagocytic activity compared to the positive control and a higher activity compared to the untreated control. The amount um, of immunodat was at two micrograms of immunodat or the elderberry extract. And we see a comparable immunomodulatory result as the positive control, which again is very, very promising in terms of an in vitro result. Then the final clinical trial, which we're going to discuss, um, we call it clinical trial four, is also on immunodat. And this is a human clinical trial. It's currently under review. So the trial has been completed, we're very happy to say. We're hoping it's going to be published in uh, hopefully the next few months. 
Um, it's under peer review right now, um, but it's a double-blinded, placebo-controlled human study. Um, 60 participants total, 30 in each group, ages 18 to 60. And the key inclusion here was that the criteria included um, subjects with mild to moderate symptoms of COVID-19, and they've recovered according to uh, clinical guidelines and as determined by CDC guidelines. Um, the participants were randomly assigned to two groups. One group ingested two 250 milligrams of immunodet per day. Um, the capsules, uh, again, totaled 500 milligrams. And they had this in addition to the standard care, standard care as you know, prescribed by the CDC. The group two undergoes just regular conventional standard of care. So standard of care, what does that include? That includes bed rest, plenty of fluids, uh, typical viral cold, flu, cough, cold care instructions, et cetera. And so what you see here is two different groups. Again, one group, um, both of the groups having standard of care, but one group also having immunodet, the other group having just the regular standard of care that they would normally have had. And it was a 30-day trial. Assessments were based on day zero, um, 15, uh, day 15, and day 30. And the clinical trial uh, outcomes or the assessment uh, measures of the outcomes, these were assessed based on symptoms, including cough, low-grade fever, fatigue, shortness of breath, headaches, brain fog, and other cognitive difficulties. Um, we also used an insomnia severity index, which is an international standard index used by researchers, and mental health measures as well, uh, stress, anxiety, difficulty concentrating, headaches, and the WHO QOL brief. This is a, again, uh, international uh, validated scale. Um, they're commonly used in research studies. And um, it's a 26-item self-questionnaire based on physical health, psychological health, and social relationships and environment. So the results. Well, the results, again, um, we found them to be actually quite promising, specifically in the area of fatigueness, shortness of breath, headache, melagia, and weakness. Also, in terms of insomnia, anxiety, and lack of concentration. Um, the standard of care with immunodat was more effective than just plain standard of care uh, without the without the immunodat. And the p-value here is less than 0 0.05 between the groups, meaning that there was a significant difference um, between the two groups. And this difference was not just by chance. The other results on the insomnia, on the insomnia severity index, shows that both the immunodet and the control group had a significant reduction of insomnia symptoms. However, when between the group analysis was conducted, the immunodet had a greater reduction in the insomnia symptoms. So again, insomnia, you know, um, with the immunodet was actually a little bit better than, um, than without the immunodat. And then finally, mental health. Again, in the trial, um, the immunodat subjects, all mental health symptoms showed a significant difference on and between the group analysis. The immunodat group had a greater decrease in mental health symptoms when compared to the control group. So again, quite promising results. And then the results of the WHO QOL um, breath. In here, you see that the immunodat group showed a significant improvement when compared to the control group on the physical health domain. And you can see that that's this chart over here on the left-hand side, uh, the psychological health domain, and the overall assessment on the WHO QOL scale. So in conclusion, You've now seen, you know, learned a little bit about PCS, hopefully, and you've seen four studies, um, very broad range of studies, a multivitamin, 
on a single ingredient, curcumin, um, and then two, uh, an in vitro study on a branded ingredient, Immunodat, and then a human clinical trial also on Immunodat, which is an elderberry extract. Um, and I think you can see that there are promising results showing that supplements may play a strong role in immunity and in the post-COVID study, post-COVID setting. Obviously, um, more research needs to be done, uh, more studies need to be conducted, and more understanding of immunity supporting ingredients and their role needs to be done. But the initial results over the last year and a half are extremely promising. And we always encourage other researchers to do the same and to publish and, and to research and, and to find ingredients that can help in PCS. And we thank you so much. Um, I hope you found this presentation interesting. If you have any questions, please feel free to give me a call or uh, email me. And, uh, and we thank Vita Foods for giving us this opportunity to share our knowledge and, um, and express our, our deeper understanding of, of this very important topic.